Mm. Brian and punishment. Lol. Crime and punishment, basically. <laughs> Folk. <clears throat> Another ah, there it is, life counter. Well, I guess to say this is the Brandon Punishment uh, Lost Caverns of Ixalan Commander deck. <laughs> I'm feeling these all like right in a row. So I kind of like, oh, that's right. Surging Soul. So take the Smiling Flood. Surging Soul in very dusty display commander format. Tokens. M21, how to play. And then. Get into the cards. Oh, there's a kitty cat. Can you not sit on the cards, cat? All right, here's our rares. Miss Dancer. Don't show the plastic. Oh, you bitch. Oh, I gotta catch that cat in the plastic. Kitty! Hey, bro. Don't eat the plastic, you weirdo. Oh. Well, my cat's gonna be puking up plastic layer. Good deal. And then non rare lands. And then here's our basics. Just the blue green deck. And last but not least, the collector sampler. Restless Ridge Line. Neat. It isn't with the first part of Geisha. Hmm. Alright, let's get this bad boy sleeved up, told up, and I'll let you guys know how it played. Alright, Explorers of the Deep. Merfolks, baby. So this deck. Let's see, I can pull the Ridge Line. Yeah, nothing crazy in the pack. So this deck really is like 120 bucks currently in value. Um. The branching evolution's a big one. Uh, it's already devalued though. It was probably closer to 25, 20. Or now it's like 10, which I guess is the point of a reprinting into a precon. Um, this one was really fun to play. They're all fun to play. This is the worst one of the four. Um, it didn't fare as well against external decks. It's a slower one, it's a lot of ramp. You gotta like build tokens upon tokens upon tokens. This is definitely one that would require upgrades to be tournament, like you mean, uh, table ready. Where the the Rampture one, the Dinosaur one, fared better, but it's really, if you want like to not modify and just roll up and play and know you're gonna do okay, and if you do bad, it's your own fault, would be the, uh, 
the vampire and pirate ones. <clears throat> this one has to be my least recommended one, but it's still fun to play. Uh, my buddy who likes Merfolk had a fun with it. And I'm curious to see what the professor does with upgrading it uh, for his appearance on game nights that's coming up or is already out. Who knows? The... I guess I'd just be hesitant to recommend it. But it's it's better than most of the pre-cons this year. <clears throat> Not going to lie. Uh, I think I've yet to play the March of the Machine ones in any exhaustive measure. But I've played the Lord of the Rings decks. I've played uh, Commander Masters. I played the Phyrexian ones. You know, Buddy had a, had them and we played them. So I've yet to do an official, official review. Um... You know, other than the Hobbit food deck and the Lord, like, like it's basically Ixlan, Doctor Who, and the Hobbit food deck are the top decks for the year. Um, I think I would have to recommend the Doctor Who decks over the Ixalan decks ever so slightly because of the fire design of them. But they can be really heady. You know, if you're not, they're not maybe not the best for in a new new player. But if you're a brand new player. The Ixalan decks would probably be my choice. Or the, the Hobbit food deck. It kind of plays itself. And if you miss your triggers a bunch, you know, it'll, it's not the, the worst to kind of recover from. But again, this is still fun to play. And I could easily recommend it to someone who wants a, you know, a merfolk deck. This would be the deck. Um, I, just, uh, I just didn't have as much fun, unfortunately, as the other three. And with that, though, the reprints are good deck is you know best merfolk deck ever and it's still a good deck i keep you know it's just i might want to push it towards the other ones unless it's your jam blue green scry this is you baby you got it with that i thank you for watching and you have a good day